Hey ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. As always, it is Nick here, back to your daily crypto news and analysis. And today we are going to be talking about a lot of things. So sit back, relax, and hey, I hope you are all having a beautiful day or a beautiful night wherever you guys are out there in the world. Let's dive on in. So recently, the State of the Union, of course in EU, um, put out a full... Um, post saying what are the pros and cons of blockchain regulation at sou 2024 ripple host a panel moderated by uh, manon moshed and also eui uh, schumann with these guests and one of those guests is of course Stuart Adorati and we have blockchain regulatory or regulation um, by rules or enforcement now this was back in April it was actually April 10th but the actual event is May 24th guys we are roughly one week out from this event where I do think that we are going to get a ton of major insights on what's happening around regulation. And this, remember, is the last obstacle in our way until utility paves the way. Now, over here, we have Markets in Crypto Asset Regulation, Mika. December 2024 is when this finally goes into the live stages and implementation of regulation within the EU. Now, remember what I've always said, this is an accelerator for all of the other nations to get involved on regulation. This is going to streamline regulation around crypto. And remember, by the end of 2025, we have the FSB in terms of their global regulatory framework instructed by the G20 with the IMF and the BIS also going live. So we have a lot to look forward to in the next year, especially around crypto regulation. Now, also, Stuart Adorati did quote this post and said, looking forward to speaking at the SOU 2024 in Florence next week. Uh, check out the program and catch the live streaming here in 2024 program EUI uh, SOU. Now, with all of that in mind, let's look at a few things. Let's go back to October 20th, where Megan posted this post, Ripple Labs Outerati on preparing for Mika. New video. Check this out. Also established an office in Ireland last year. Uh, we have applications pending with the uh, Central Bank of Ireland, both for a virtual asset service provider license and an e-money license. Uh, we'll work with the regulator and hopefully uh, satisfy them that we are equipped from a regulatory and a compliance standpoint to uh, operate under their supervision. Uh, and hopefully once we get that license, uh, we'll be able to use that not only to operate in Ireland, but to passport that through the EU. We're doing the same in the UK uh, last, uh, I don't think it was a few weeks ago received our uh, major payments institution license from the Monetary Authority of Singapore. Uh, we're hopeful uh, we'll get um, uh, clearance in Dubai uh, before the end of the year. Uh, we have an agreement with the Central Bank of Brazil to do business there. Uh, we operate uh, under a regulatory supervision through a joint venture in Japan. Uh, so this is the direction of travel for the industry. So there you guys have it again. Yes, this is, uh, you know, Ripple have been like they have been prepared for this, right? XRP has already been cleared. XRP is ready for Mika. XRP is ready for regulation. Technically, so is Ripple. And Ripple has been at the forefront of this. Remember, just recently, April 10th, which, by the way, is the same exact day that this got posted in terms of that major event. We have the markets in crypto assets. Mika regulation takes effect this year in the EU and will usher in a new era for regulatory clarity. Ripple already warned you about this, providing guidance for stablecoin issuers custody of digital assets, licensing and more. Again, this is going to bring clarity in the EU for crypto assets and also this entire industry. And I do think that this is where everything really begins. I think that we are about to see and witness a major change happening around this entire industry that is not only going to allow for utility projects to fully take over, but also for the world to embrace them. Now, over here, this is the post, by the way, like this is the article. I summarized it. We have the markets and crypto assets regulation is a comprehensive regulatory framework for the cryptocurrency industry in the European Union set to take effect in 2024. Mika will harmonize crypto regulations across the EU, providing legal clarity and uniform rules for over 27 countries. This will enable or yeah, this will enable uh, licensed crypto providers and issuers to operate confidently, uh, which or within a large and economic uh, significant market. Now, like I said, it is clarity 
for over 27 countries. So imagine what's going to happen outside of those countries. Every other one will align. Key aspects of Mika include regulatory clarity and consumer protection. Mika aims to enhance consumer protections while supporting innovation in the crypto market. Stablecoin regulation it introduces stability uh, mechanisms for stablecoins, demanding transparency and risk mitigation. Um, by the way, this is going to be a huge one for Ripple stablecoin. Environmental considerations of regulation and addresses the environmental impact of cryptocurrency mining. Broader regulatory framework, Mika is part of a larger EU regulatory um, effort alongside the, the Digital Operational Resilience Act, or DORA, uh, the DLT pilot regime, and the transfer of funds regulation, TFR, all focusing on digital finance security and transparency. Mika's comprehensive scope covers asset reference tokens, e-money tokens, and other utility tokens, setting specific roles for token issuance and requiring detailed white papers. It bans algorithmic stablecoins and imposes strict requirements on fiat-backed stablecoins, especially those not tied to EU currencies. While some areas like NFTs remain less clear, Mika's detailed regulations are expected to inspire similar global standards for institutional crypto asset custodians mika provides stringent uh guidelines ensuring client assets are secured and unencumbered and man mandating transparency and detailed documentation this positions the eu as a key hub for crypto custody facilitating broader adoption of digital assets and providing significant opportunities for banks and financial institutions to operate confidently within the region and by the way this whole thing here around crypto custody is all a perfect storm for medico aka ripple to fully take on the uh, institutional custody game this is all aligned perfectly with what uh ripple is fully focused on which is taking over in terms of the institutional space but also for what they're focused on utilizing blockchain they want blockchain to spread like a wildfire and regulations mika is definitely going to be an accelerant for that guys once we have regulations it's game over and i want you guys to understand how big of a move regulations really are for this industry now also over here we have Ripple Stuart Alderati on blockchain regulation by rules or enforcement. Big shout out to XRP Drops, 524-2024. Uh, the EU has led the way in developing a comprehensive regulatory regime under Mika. The UK has extended traditional financial regulation to capture this new activity under its Financial Services and Markets Act, 2023. And the US has taken the approach of regulation by enforcement. And uh, check this out. This is the full um, quote here. And yeah, like I said, everyone is aligned with these regulatory moves being made by specific areas like the EU. The UK is also getting ready. I've talked about this on multiple occasions. The UK has been ready for a while, while the US continues to fall behind. The US is still behind in terms of regulation, but this, once we see Mika go live, the UK is also going to follow through, and I also believe that this is when the US will follow through. Remember that the US really kind of follows what the EU does. So the EU first, and then everything else will align perfectly and fall into place. I'm telling you guys, this is exactly why the FSB with the G20 and the IMF and even the you know BIS, they are aligning a global regulatory framework for you know being implemented by the end of 2025 because harmonization of regulation is so damn important. And I keep telling you guys this. Now, beyond this, we also have over here, big shout out to Smoke Dog, evidence that XRP will be covered under Mika. Mika's crypto asset regulation will cover utility tokens. According to McKinsey sources cited below, XRP is a utility token. And uh, here's the full document, by the way, by uh, Matthew Lin Y. I'm actually going to open this up in a new tab just to kind of follow through with it. But here we have supporting the tokenization of finance which is a huge statement, by the way, the European regulatory framework created by the Mika regulation. And here's the full breakdown of it. You have utility tokens on the left side in terms of the crypto asset issuer. You also have DLT in terms of security tokens. So DLT based financial instruments are being mentioned here. Um, and then also on the right side, we have entry into application scheduled for December 2024, except stable coins from end of June 2024. So at the end of the June 2024, that's when uh, stable coins get really um, entered into this application. Um, and then we also have a uh, repeal of PACT Act provisions as well. Entry into force on June 29th, 2023, which is a big uh, game changer. And also over here, we have key assumptions. We approached XRP with more of a utility token framework. Our findings are based on calculating the aggregate incremental value of XRP needed to support the value of transactions. Its network facilitates, assuming adoption of Ripple continues to grow at a relatively rapid pace, which is a huge 
uh, quote there as well. And then also on the bottom left, you have our assumptions, 155 trillion in 2018 in terms of the cross-border payment space, growing 4% annually to eventually reach 230 trillion in 2028, which we did hear about 250 trillion by 2027. We don't know if that's going to happen, but we also have utilizing McKinsey's estimate of global cross-border payments occurring each year around 155 trillion. We grow this number by 4% annually. And by the way, they do mention that starting at 0.54%, in 2019, this is their assumption, Ripple's market share, and eventually assuming Ripple is able to capture 79.47% of the global cross-border payments market. Guys, that is 79.47% of the $230 trillion by 2028 cross-border payment market. We also have rationale. We use an S-curve to estimate Ripple's market share over the next 10 years. This assumes Ripple can capture 80% of the global cross-border payments market within 10 years. So yeah, it's not going to happen overnight, but within 10 years, by 2034, Ripple could very well be dominating 80% of the cross-border payments market, which is insane. And also over here, we have um, one example is Ripple in terms of a utility token. If you look at Ripple in that context, it is more like a utility coin. And also here's the full document by Matthew Lin Y. Big shout to Matthew uh, Lin Y. I actually missed this one. We have European Central Bank DLT testing begins May 13th. They will be testing DLT networks. Here we have tokenization of financial instruments and central bank money. This is on May 9th. First wave of exploratory work starts on May 13th. And we have uh, 10 market participants and six market DLT operators approved to participate or participate, sorry, uh, business cases mainly explore the security settlement cycle, additional financial firms and businesses cases expected in wave two starting in July. And also over here, we have implications for central bank money settlement, our um, current target services settlement of payments in central bank money and T2 integrated settlement of securities and target two uh, securities. Um, and the main thing is DLT, market DLTs with tokenization securities uh, can be recorded and settled on DLT platforms. That's huge because $2.5 quadrillion worth of securities are just settled by the DTCC in one fiscal year. Risk of market fragmentation if multiple DLT platforms coexist in the long term but lack interoperability. What is the best way to enable central bank money settlement of the cash leg? And by the way, yes, interoperability is so crucial. Multiple options for central bank money settlement. Here we have trigger and bridge um, approaches and then also full DLT approaches as well. So they are getting ready to fully embrace DLT as a whole for payments and settlement, which is a major statement as well. Um, some very big moves being made here, guys. Now, what about Ripple, right? Like where does Ripple really kind of come into play and have they been planning? Just like I said over here, right? Like Ripple has been ready. Ripple has been planning this for a while. They've been prepared. And the way that we know this is because go back to July 4th. Here you have um, happy to host an event with Ripple for colleagues from both the public and private sector on blockchain and sustainability in the EU. Guys, we have Renew Europe as the major statement here. Again, Ripple sitting at a table of high value individuals like this is no like this is what you want to focus on. These private meetings, they are huge. Not only do they give you confidence behind your investments, but also they give you confidence behind specific names like Ripple that are utilizing XRP, which is your investment um, in specific approaches. And in my opinion, yes, blockchain and sustainability is going to be a huge thing in the EU Mika um, regulatory framework. But remember that Ripple is at the forefront of this. Ripple has already been planning and meeting with the EU. And it, I'm telling you, the connections that Ripple has, it's insane versus what other companies around the space have. Now, beyond this, remember also over here where the XRP ledger and XRP really get tapped in. Antony Welfare, big shout to Antony Welfare. We have our partner Superhow announces the next stage of the Axiology projects using the XRP ledger and our CBDC platform. Oh, wait, I thought they were using the private XRP ledger. No, this is the public XRP ledger. We are thrilled to announce an extended collaboration with Ripple. We will be working with the Axiology Project to explore the possibilities of the EU DLT pilot regime, EU DLT pilot regime. The ongoing partnership between us has been focused on driving innovation within the regulated tokenized securities infrastructure space. Let's go back to that Matthew Lin Y post over here. Guys, all talking about tokenization of securities and settled on DLT. This project was specifically focusing on this 
The DLT pilot regime offers a unique and opportune platform for Superhow and Ripple as innovative enterprises to play an instrumental role in fostering the safety and security of digital assets markets for all participants by subjecting the DLT pilot regime to rigorous testing through the Axiology project. Regulators gain unparalleled assurance regarding the resilience and security of digital assets. We are committed to driving innovation and advancing the adoption of blockchain technology in the financial industry. This is a huge, huge statement, guys. This is a huge project as well. When we focus on the big changes happening, Ripple is at the forefront of almost every single one of these moves. They have been preparing. They have been calculated since day one. Ripple has been playing chess while all these other players have been playing checkers. It is a night and day difference, and you can clearly see that in all of these major meetings that Ripple has. These are private meetings where a lot of the major moves are being discussed around how to utilize, adopt, implement, blockchain-based technology to reinvent and revolutionize specific areas and in fact revolutionize everything so with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you guys did definitely leave a like subscribe to notifications on because more free content you guys are more than welcome to follow me on twitter and join the free discord in the description below and with that being said guys it's been nick thanks for watching peace out